Welcome to worship. I'm the Reverend Rhonda Hain, pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church and Christian Day School. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And on this Sunday, we again have an Advent wreath lighting liturgy, and we place the fourth figure, which is Joseph, in the stable. During that time, we also have the lighting of the fourth candle and a reading. We hope that our Advent wreath lighting liturgy helps us watch and wait and prepare for Jesus' coming. And so we begin this worship service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. <laughs> Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. 
With your abundant grace and light, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of confession found in the bulletin. Forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. Despite our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not honored you. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. I invite you, dear friends, to take a moment to offer your personal confession to God. Friends, hear the good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from the burden of guilt free to move forward in faith. May you be strengthened by God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light four candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light finish the darkness. He is coming let your lights be shining. We have lit the first three candles for hope, for peace, and for joy. Today, we'd light the fourth candle, the candle of love. In a world where even evergreens turn dry and brittle, God's love is a reality that endures forever. With this flame, we affirm the love of God that surrounds us and fills us at all times. God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus, that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. God's love through Jesus Christ transforms us and our world. There is not greater power than love. It is stronger than rulers and empires, stronger than grief or despair, stronger even than death. And we love because God first loved us. Light four candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light finish the darkness. He is coming, tell the glad tidings. Let your lights be shining. Welcome, young people. Delighted that you're worshiping with us on the fourth Sunday in Advent. On this fourth Sunday, we add the Joseph figure to our stable scene with Mary and the baby and the animals. Each week we add a different figure and this week we focus on Joseph. And so I'd like you to focus in on the stable here. Look around the stable. As I read the Advent Children's Devotion from Arden Mead about Joseph. Can you find Joseph? He's to the right. His arm is around Mary and he's touching the baby Jesus. Young people, did you know that if you look in the Bible, in Matthew's Gospel or Luke's Gospel, you will not find a single thing about Joseph in terms of what he said? You find out a little bit about his life, but he never said a word. As famous as he is, Mary's husband is never quoted in the Bible. Joseph didn't say anything, but what he did was very important. Joseph obeyed. When the angel of the Lord told him to take Mary to be his wife, Joseph did it. 
When Joseph was told to take the Christ child and marry his mother and flee to Egypt because of persecution, being refugees there for several years, and then return, Joseph obeyed. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. What a wonderful example Joseph is of listening and obeying. Young people, can you think of a time, either yesterday or today, when you were told to do something and you obeyed without questioning or without arguing? Let's have a prayer. And when we pray, what do we do? We fold our hands, we bow our heads, we close our eyes. And repeat after me. Thank you, God, for the example of Joseph. Thank you that he obeyed you and trusted you. Help me to listen to your words, to believe your words, and to obey them. Thank you for your love. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. makes it clear that God comes with good news for ordinary people, people from little known places. This king, the savior, will not be born to royalty in a palace, but to common folk in a stall. Here Luke highlights the role of the spirit, a special emphasis in Luke's gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter, beginning with verse 26. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by these words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born, will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her, and Mary said, 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength in your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise you made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, on the fourth Sunday in Advent, the gospel turns our attention away from John the Baptist, who we've had for a couple weeks, to Mary, the witness of Mary, Jesus' mother. I believe Mary's words and ways can offer us the comfort we long for during these difficult days. I believe Mary's words and ways can offer us the encouragement we need to prepare, to prepare our hearts, our minds, our lives for the birth, for the coming of Jesus, anew, fresh in our lives and in our world. Today's gospel, the angel describes to Mary really an impossible future, truly unbelievable circumstances. Mary, a peasant child and a virgin is to bear the Son of God, the long-awaited Savior. Amazing! Outrageous! No precedence for this in the past. How can this be? Mary knows that pregnant unmarried women in her town are disgraced, they're shunned, they're even killed. How would her family, how would her village respond? And what about Joseph, her future husband? What would he think? And what about Mary's own plans? We know she's a teenage girl, maybe 13. She has hopes and dreams and aspirations like many of our teenagers do. What about her future plans? Putting all these concerns about herself, her community, her future, putting these aside, Mary declares to the angel, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Amazing. Amazing that a teenager would respond with such faith. That she would obey God when such disastrous consequences were sure to be inevitable. What's even more remarkable is that in the face of disgrace, misunderstanding, and possible death, Mary trusts God. And Mary's song of praise, which is this we had as a psalm today, her song of praise, she praises God with a faithful, believing heart for her low estate. The fact that she's a peasant, the fact that she's in many ways a nobody in society. She praises God for her low estate for choosing her, a teenager, to do the impossible, to bear God's son. She praises God also in advance for the future promises, the future blessing. She remembers God's promise of salvation, feeding the hungry, healing and restoring all who are poor and marginalized and victimized. God's promises comfort her. In her difficult and life-threatening situation, Mary trusts God. She remembers who God is. She remembers God's promises, God's love and mercy. She accepts her God-given mission, however challenging, however difficult. And she affirms that with God, all things are possible. What about us? What do you and I do 
do you and I think as we face difficulty and disappointment? Do we focus solely on the difficulty? Do we look at past failures and project them into the future? Maybe even participating in a self-fulfilling prophecy? Or like Mary, do we remember that a gracious God holds the future? Holds the future. A God untamed by convention. A God who can make all things new. Mary does what the Apostle Paul exhorts us to do in the face of hard times. She remembers that God is near. She remembers that God is faithful. She rejoices in God. She thinks about who God is and what God has done for her and her family. And she clings to God's promises. To use the Apostle Paul's words, Mary holds fast to what is good. Boy, that's such encouragement for these days. Not to hold fast to the misery and the difficulty, but to hold fast, to cling to what is good. And what is good according to the scriptures? She clings to what is true, honorable, just, commendable, and worthy of praise. She clings to, she holds fast to what is true, honorable, just, commendable, and worthy of praise. And what happens when she does that? What happens when we do that? God's peace guards and protects body, spirit, soul. Mary's witness is an example for us as we attempt to live with life-altering challenges. The loss of a job, the loss of a loved one, maybe a health concern, the ongoing social isolation, Mary's witness is an example as we attempt to live in difficult and heartbreaking times of pandemic. Times of major national divisions, political manipulation, social unrest, and moral collapse. These are the days that we're living in. Mary's witness is an example to us in challenging times to continue loving and serving and working for God today and into 2021. Yet Mary's life is more than this. In Mary, we see the meaning, the purpose of our lives. Mary shows us that our bodies can serve as a vessel for the life of God. Isn't that amazing? She honors God with her whole being, her body and her spirit. Mary's example to us shows us that our humanity, our hu humanness, can also, like hers, be full of grace. Mary submits to the call of carrying and bearing another life within her own, despite the changes to her body, the discomfort of a new life, the new activity within. She submits to the call of bearing another life within her life, regardless of the inconvenience of those inevitable labor pains of difficulty. In Mary, we see her own calling to bear God's life in the world and how to respond in the face of sacrifice and difficulty. Friends, you and I are called to give birth to God's life daily. We are called to reveal God's life in and through our daily work, our routines, our speech, our actions. We witness to the life of God in all we say and do. What might God be choosing to do in and through you and me as we move forward from this year of 2020, such difficulty, into the year of 2021? What might God be calling us to do? We fragile, vulnerable, fearful human beings. What gateway of divine life might your life be and mine? What might God the Holy Spirit to de desire to give birth to through us in 2021? The good news is we don't do this alone. The power of the Spirit gives us what we need to birth a divine life in our world, 
in our circumstances, in our families. So friends, Advent is indeed about God's promises. Like Mary, we're invited to trust God's promises. We're invited to trust that our lives and our world can be changed by Jesus coming among us. That's the good news of Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us, makes all the difference. And so with Mary, we watch and we wait and we ready our hearts for the presence of God. With Mary, we acknowledge that our lives are indeed claimed for the life and purposes of God. I mean, all the sadness, the difficulty, and the uncertainty. And with Mary, we remember, we remember that God does indeed speak to us. That angel spoke good words, good news to Mary. Our good news was spoken to us in baptism when the Lord also said to us, do not be afraid. In baptism, God said to us, don't be afraid. You are my beloved child. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And so we are bold to say with Mary, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be so. Amen. Are at this time. 
If you would like to make a financial contribution to St. Paul Lutheran Church to help us continue to do God's work in the world, you may do so in two ways. You may write us a check and send it to St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in the city, or you can turn to our website, which is www.stpaulnewcity.church, and click on the giving link, which is a secure online donation portal, and donate that way. We are very grateful for your generosity. And we continue now to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out your mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. We especially pray for Ellie, Jody, Gundrum, Zoya, Carolyn, Lucille, Barbara, Kirsten, Lillian, Bud, Debbie Vanny's sister, Joan, Lorraine, Ben, Laura, Marie, Lori, Dwayne, Immacula, Irene, Maggie, Greg, Nikki, the Griebuslong family, Helene, Julia, Luella, Eileen and family, Ellen and family, Linda, Jim, Bruce and family, Arlene and family, Helen and family, and Cindy and family. We also pray for all who are grieving, especially the family and friends of Jane Brandt, Ruth Semino, Salvatore Staffa, Linda Thompson Smith, and all who mourn the loss of family and friends due to the coronavirus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh Lord, our Creator, you teach us to number our days that we may become wise in our hearts. We give you thanks for Joe Tedesco, who celebrates his 100th birthday on December 21st. 
We also give you thanks for John Helmers, Evie Torkelson, Evie Locke, and Arlene Glum on the occasion of their birthdays. Grant them renewal in your spirit and joy in daily living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebearers. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina von Bora, Luther, and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give you thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, there are a number of announcements in the bulletin. I call one to your attention before the blessing, and it's about Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve, we will offer a traditional video Holy Communion service, very similar to what we have offered in the past. The heartache is that we will not offer an in-person Christmas Eve service. We are doing this because of the growing coronavirus spread in our community and at the urging of the Metropolitan New York Synod Bishop, Paul Eggensteiner, urging us churches not to have in-person worship so that we can remain healthy and vital and hopefully next year at this time gather in wonder and hope and joy together. And so, Receive the Advent blessing. The creator of the stars, lush your Advent waiting. The long expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you. Our hope and expect
Redemption that sets your people 